Hi, I'm Phil Constantine. In this edition of Travels with Phil, we're traveling back in time to 1977. This is one in a series of interviews I did for a program called To the Point for Rice University in Houston. I helped to develop this program, which showcased some of the brilliant people associated with Rice. This episode is with Rice Professor Dr. Robert Dix. We discuss some of the ramifications of the Panama Canal Treaty. Dr. Dix was born in New Jersey, graduated magna cum laude with a B.A. in government in 1951 from Harvard, eventually receiving both his master's and a doctorate from Harvard. During college, he met his wife, Mary, who also became a Rice professor. In 1957, Dix joined the United States Foreign Service, where he served mostly at the U.S. Embassy in Bogota, Colombia, until 1960. Dix taught at Yale University and became a research associate at the Harvard Center for International Affairs before coming to Rice in 1968 as an assistant professor of political science. In 1971, he was promoted to full professor. From 1987 until his retirement in 94, Dix was the Lena Goldman Fox Professor of Political Science. Dr. Dix's two best-known works were Columbia, The Political Dimensions of Change, and The Politics of Columbia. Dix received the Hoover Institution Prize for the Best Article of the Year on Latin American Politics in 1985 and served as a member of the editorial board of the Latin American Research Review from 1992 to 1995. Professor Robert Dix passed in 1998. I've added images for this video, but the audio remains exactly as it was originally broadcast in 1977. According to the Gallup poll, the vast majority of the American public is against the ratification of the proposed Panama Canal Treaty. However, there may be strong repercussions in Latin America if the treaty is not ratified. To the Point, presented by Rice University. Along with me today is Professor Robert Dix, political scientist, and his specialty is Latin American politics. And Professor Dix, welcome to the Thank you, Phil. And I guess we should really start off and go back to that. What exactly would be the repercussions that we would be facing if the Panama Canal Treaty is not ratified? And what do you think is going to happen physically? I mean, will the revolts happen that have been so often talked about by people? I think the repercussions will be of several kinds. Uh, in the first place, uh, failure to ratify the treaty would clearly be a setback uh, to President Carter's Latin American policy, and incidentally it's a policy that was also adhered to by President Ford and Secretary Kissinger, which was to uh, resolve some of the outstanding issues in Latin America as the basis uh, of a new kind of relationship, and the Panama Canal is one of those, uh, one of those issues. The second uh, and uh, probably greater difficulty would be that there undoubtedly would be unrest and disturbance and probably violence in Panama itself. Uh, thirdly, of course, would be a setback to President Carter politically uh, here at home. Uh, and finally, uh, it would probably be a setback um, to our national security interests uh, in the Caribbean, uh, if you want to argue that the, the treaty is in fact beneficial for those interests. Now, it's been said that this is going to cause grave problems, or maybe not grave, grave might be a little bit strong on the words, but it's going to uh, lose face for the United States if the treaty is not ratified uh, with, um, in speaking, I mean, of the other Latin American countries. Is this really that strong? And if so, uh, what will losing face really do toward the relationships between Latin America and the United States? Well, it would look as though um, it's very difficult for our president to lead and it will look as though the United States is not ready for uh, the kind of relationship that I think most countries in the third world, which includes Latin America, uh, feel is the mature kind of relationship for the second part of the, the 20th century, which is a relationship more based on equality and more based on, on a reciprocal uh, regard for others' uh, interests and sovereignty than was true, say, when Teddy Roosevelt uh, allegedly said, uh, I took Panama. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing has always interested me is the fact that many people believe the United States owns the Panama Canal and has never owned it, has had a, a lease in perpetuity, which is just like a lease on an apartment per se. 
uh, legalistically, is this uh, what would just be like the equivalent of somebody saying, well, you've leased it for a long time and I'd really like to have it back? Is that basically what the Panamanians are saying? Yes, of course, legally, um, uh, we have a perfect right to keep the canal as it is. Uh, Panama, or at least a representative of Panama at the time, has signed the treaty. Uh, but what they are saying is that, A, it was not really a, a valid treaty to begin with. As you may know, it was a Frenchman who signed the treaty, not a Panamanian. And it was done really under conditions which we re would regard as a duress at the present time. Uh, and they are arguing, uh, basically, that the treaty is outdated uh, as well, that it does not meet, is not fair to Panama, and does not meet the needs of the second half of the 20th century, either for Panama or, or for the United States. A lot of conservative uh, elements in the United States have said, basically, that uh, General, General Torrijos is a dictator. Now, now, does this actually come across to the uh, Panamanians as a dictator, or he's, is he really considered to be the legitimate ruler of Panama, or president, or whichever word you care to choose? But is he considered to be the legitimate leader of that country? I would say he's considered to be the legitimate leader by most Panamanians, which is not to say he can't be a dictator. Lots of le dictators are legitimate rulers and considered so by the people. Um, of course, I, I think this is basically a false issue. After all, there are dictators and dictators, and many of the uh, regimes around the world, which these same people heartily support, are also dictatorships. So I don't really think that's, that's a, a, a big issue. Um, Panama can never, even if it were a democracy, it might be a dictatorship tomorrow, or it might be a democracy uh, tomorrow. Uh, these things fluctuate. Panama has been both over the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, it's been both relatively democratic and, and a dictatorship and it probably will be again uh, in, in the future. Well, then, thinking along those lines, uh, the point is that the United States, uh, many people in the United States have said, if we give it back to Panama, there's really you know, no probability, or uh, better yet to say, we have no real idea what's going to happen to the country itself. We may be giving it back to a country that's going to wind up in complete turmoil. Is this... Uh, according to the previous history of Panama, does this appear to be something that could legitimately, could legitimately be a concern to the American people, that it could wind up in just strictly a matter of, uh, say, what happened to Nasser uh, when he took over the Suez Canal? It, thinking along the lines, if we do not give them back the treaty, will they, I mean, the canal, will they go ahead and take over? Is this the kind of uh, way that the system works down there in Panama? Does this appear to be something that is a viable con uh, possibility that they would take it over if we don't give it back. Well, obviously, they can't take it over if the United States Army is there. But um, I think it's fair to recognize that uh, Panama might be unstable if we gave them the canal. They might be unstable if, if we didn't. Uh, the risks, it seems to me, are roughly the same either way. In the first place, no regime in Panama that is imaginable would want to close the canal because at least a quarter of the national revenue depends on the canal. And Panamanians, I don't care whether it's a, a regime headed by a Fidel Castro or a regime headed by a right-wing dictator or whether it's a democracy, is going to be interested in closing that canal. Secondly, the vulnerability of the canal to sabotage is roughly the same whether we keep the present arrangement or whether we don't. Because, as I'm told, at least, one person with a suitcase full of explosives that throws this onto a lock, who could be a Panamanian workman, could be anybody, uh, could basically disrupt the canal. And this could happen whether the Panamanians, uh, whether, w whether we give the jurisdiction over the canal to Panamanians, or whether we keep the, the status as it is. And I'm also told that it would take about 100,000 U.S. troops to really fully, adequately protect the canal from that sort of thing, and we aren't about to make that kind of commitment. General Torrijos has made basically the same statement that you did, that you know it could be an army or one man could come in and blow up the whole thing. I'm wondering, though, economically speaking, you did say it amounts to about a quarter of their uh, national economy. Is this going to change under the treaty? Will their take of the, or their cut of the pie, as it were, be any larger or any smaller? if they start operating the canal as their own property. The fees for transit of the cor uh, canal undoubtedly will be raised by Panama. As it is, uh, the fees um, 
do not cover the expenses for the canal. And undoubtedly, the Panamanians will, will raise the fee. Again, if they raise them too high, more than the market will be bare, uh, shipping will be diverted elsewhere. As a matter of fact, uh, shipping through the canal has been declining in recent years. The canal, and this is something that I think really needs to be understood, that economically and militarily, the value of the canal has been declining, and everyone, uh, every prospect is that it will continue to decline in both respects um, over the next 25 years. Uh, or to the year 2000 and, and thereafter, uh, that the, the real solution, the real solution for anyone who wants to preserve commercial and military uh, transit through the canal in the future, of course, is a new canal. And there is a clause in this treaty which says that we will talk with Panama about either expanding this canal or building a new one. But I think it should be understood by anybody who who wants our large aircraft carriers to go through the canal and the large tankers to go through the canal, which at present they do not, they cannot, which requires the building of a new canal, that without this treaty with Panama, it's extremely unlikely that that canal could be built, either in Panama or elsewhere for political reasons. No Latin American country, it seems to me, uh, least of all Panama, could agree to a new canal if the United States would not ratify and, and come to new arrangements over this current canal. And I think this is extremely important for those who argue the commercial and the military uh, benefits uh, of the existing canal. So what I'm saying is that for those who, uh, who look to these benefits over the long term, that it's important uh, to have this treaty. Economically speaking, though, uh, do you consider the fact that only the largest of the super tankers cannot go through the canal? And these are the super tankers, is what it is. And actually, I think only the nuclear aircraft carriers are the only military uh, vessels that cannot go through there now also. Does this appear to mean that uh, oil prices might go up if Panama takes over canal and raises the uh, cost for going through, say, such as uh, oil shipments from Venezuela to uh, California or the western coast? Uh, you, know, all, you know, obviously, considering the fact that we've got the Alaska oil coming down, it's... Uh, it's uh, not exactly coming down at a regular rate at the p this particular moment. But will this cause some economic problems directly to the United States because of a possible raise in the cost, whereas if the United States did not ratify, they may not raise the cost of transit through the canal? Well, as I say, as with everything else uh, in this world of economics, uh, undoubtedly the fees will go up to some extent anyway, whether Panama uh, takes the canal or, or, or not. Uh, no, I don't think it will materially. Only 16 percent of United States trade goes through the, uh, through the canal, and most oil does not go through, and the fees on the shipping would be a relatively minor cost uh, compared to uh, uh, the hiking of the prices uh, by, the, by the oil countries. So I don't really think that would be a, uh, a major factor. It would be an annoyance, of course, to certain shipping firms that ship their, their things through the canal. but. In terms of overall price levels in the United States, or oil price levels, I don't think it makes much difference. What's going to happen to Jimmy Carter, uh, just from talking with your um, colleagues? What's going to happen to him? It seems like Jimmy Carter may lose both ways. Uh, do you see any possibilities of him coming out on the good side of, of this deal, no matter what happens? Yeah, if the treaty is not ratified, of course, uh, he'll look bad in a number of respects. If it is ratified, I think uh, that although it will be used against him in political campaigns, it will also make his leadership. Uh, he will really, uh, I think, look like leader in many respects. And let me just give you a very brief quote from an unlikely source, William Buckley, Jr., uh, on this subject um, with regard to leadership, because I think this is an important issue. This is something that it seems to me the United States um, needs to do in terms of its uh, its world and Latin American leadership. Buckley says this, we could stay in, we have a right to stay in. He said, make that point clear and then get out while the initiative is still clearly our own. That is the way great nations should act. And I think if this succeeds, that Carter's international image, and especially in Latin America, will be greatly enhanced. Uh, domestically, I think it will be enhanced, uh, and I don't think ultimately it will cost them that much uh, politically. I think most Americans are not going to vote on the subject of the canal. They're going to vote 
their pocketbooks and similar concerns uh, rather than issues of this sort. And uh, so I, I, I think in the end it will be beneficial to him, although in the short run. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to leave comments down below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you would like to subscribe to my channel, just click on the button over on the right hand side. Thank you very much.